Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Welcome back for the November 2023 monthly update of our Tesla solar panel and power wall system. We're back out here in the garage with the power walls and the wheel set that we swapped off of our Model 3 here. Uh, it's the rainy season as you might be able to hear out uh, side, but basically our production is at the lowest. It's pretty much going to be all year. So this month I'm going to go over how we can utilize our power walls to the fullest. I want to be able to save money, but I also want to have backup power as this is, tends to be the time that we lose power the most. Stay tuned for all the tips. Last month I went over the decline in solar production and why that happens. Now that trend is going to continue to happen until December 21st. Basically the earth is at its max tilt on its axis away from the sun in the northern hemisphere and the days are getting shorter. That'll change after December 21st. But a typical November day, we're only using about 20 or 25 kilowatt hours in the house, you know, which is decreased because we're not using AC as much, but we're also only producing about 20 or 25 kilowatt hours. Now what tends to happen when you keep your power walls in self-powered mode at 100% is that you deplete them during the day or nighttime, charge them back up during the day, but they're not getting all the way back up to 100%. So we'd end up getting into a lurch where we go to 90, 80, 70, 60. Eventually, we'd have to just set it to 100%, let them you know, basically charge from the solar all day and utilize the grid that day. But that left us in a spot where if we did have a power outage, we wouldn't have any you know, backup protection. So I wanted to try something a little bit different starting at the end of November here and into December. Now, what I decided to do was set our self-powered, uh, you know, basically backup reserve to 60% backup and 40% self-powered. Why did I choose that number? I'll kind of explain that a little bit here, but basically it's 60% and 40% with three power walls here at 13 and a half kilowatt hours. That leaves us about 16 kilowatt hours for self-powered mode and about 24 kilowatt hours for backup protection. So as you already probably know, I run our system in self-powered mode all year. Basically, my goal with our solar and power wall systems here is to pay the utility company as little money as possible. Now, our winter rates for electricity with PG&E are 38 cents off peak and I think 41 or 42 cents uh, peak during the winter. Same 38 cent base rate in summer, but it goes all the way up to 51 cents per kilowatt hour in summer. That's quite expensive here. But the important part to note here is that difference in those rates. In the winter, it's only four cents. So if I were to uh, put my system into time-based control, the system looks at it and I think it knows with the inefficiencies of like charging and discharging, basically that it's not worth it to discharge those power walls. So it will actually pop up a little message that says, hey, the difference in your rates is enough isn't enough for us to discharge the power walls. They'll just sit there at 100% and you know not really be used except for a backup. I don't like that because I bought them to be used and I don't wanna pay those fees and non-bypassable charges and such to PG&E as much as possible. Now, you may be asking, why did I choose that 60 and 40 split? Basically with November production of about 20 to 25 kilowatt hours in self-powered mode, the house will take a preference over the power walls. So the house is gonna use about eight to 12 kilowatt hours itself of solar, leaving about 10 to 15% or 10 to 15 kilowatt hours, I should say, um, for charging the power walls. That's about 30 to 40%. Basically, this allows us to go from 60 all the way as close to about 100% as possible, utilizing the power walls as much as possible without having to worry about the levels that we set. Now, in the winter with the shorter days there, uh, we're starting to use the power walls at about 3 to 4 p.m. ish versus about 5 or 6 p.m. that we would during the summer with those longer days. Basically, once the power walls take over at about 3 or 4 p.m. with that 40% self-powered, uh, that lasts us easily until 8, 9, 10 p.m., even if we're doing laundry, using the oven to cook, etc. Um, on the days where we don't use much electricity, that 40% can usually take us all through the night, um, usually until about 5 or 6 a.m., um, but basically what that allows us to do is not pay those peak rates. 
What it's also doing is utilizing that 60% backup reserve in case we have a power outage overnight. It allows us to utilize about 25 kilowatt hours just in case something were to happen, the sun doesn't come you know, up because it's rainy the next day and we have a bit of backup power for us. Um, so you're utilizing the power walls using the 60-40 split to have a big backup reserve just in case something happens, but you're also avoiding paying those peak rates. I just can't stand paying the peak rates. Now we may use the grid a bit more than we normally would if we were just 100% self-powered, but in this case, it's all those banked excess credits from the summer. So we're just paying those non-bypassable charges instead of the peak rates, and I'd much rather do that myself. Now, do you run your system in a different way? Let me know in the comments if you do, if you've got maybe a better system or setup you think that uh, would work a little bit better in this. I'm interested to hear it. Now, before we take a look at the data here, it looks like Tesla has actually fixed one of the bugs I had talked about for a couple months here where it was showing blips of grid usage where we weren't using the grid at all. Um, so if you look at last month's numbers compared to this month's numbers the, in the videos, they might be a little bit different. I think this is an important point to make though, is that you want to make sure that your power walls, your gateway, and your phone are all updated and connected to Wi-Fi. Basically the great thing about Tesla is they're constantly updating and upgrading features. So make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi or you know have cellular connectivity so that you can get all those awesome updates that they send out regularly. Our uh, gateway currently is on 23.36.3 and I think the iOS app is on 4.28. It might've gone past a couple point releases at this point. But as always, if you're looking at a Tesla solar panel, power wall, or solar roof system, Tesla has a $500 discount. If you use my referral code, I'll link that up above and down below. Uh, just make sure you sign up using that link. They won't add it afterwards. Um, but basically it's $100, have Tesla come out. It's a uh, completely refundable $100. Take a look at your house, your system, get a design, see if you like it. If you don't, you can cancel it and you get your 100 bucks back. If not, you get that $500 off on your system. Let me know if you use the code. Now let's take a look at the data. Now we'll start off by taking a look at house usage. In October, we used 986.7 kilowatt hours. In November, that was down to 663.5 kilowatt hours. Wait, that's a big drop though. So I looked at this data a little bit closer and it looks like Tesla may have introduced a different bug. Basically, it looks like our vehicle charging data is no longer included in the house data. How do I know this? We charged our car about 50 kilowatt hours one night. And if you look at the house data here, there's not a day above 50 kilowatt hours. Hopefully they add it back in, you know, maybe put it in a section with a different color like they do for solar production that differentiates it. We'll just have to see. So looking at the Model 3 and the Model Y charging data, we charge about 180 kilowatt hours at home this month. So that adds up to about 840 kilowatt hours for the month of November. Now, it's chillier here in November, so we definitely aren't using the AC at all, and that basically averages out to about 28 kilowatt hours per day of house usage. Now, if you take a look at our solar production, they're very close. Uh, some might be more, some might be less. So compared to those, you'll have to see why we started doing the power walls like we did. Now, uh, between the Model 3 and the Model Y, I said we charged about 180 kilowatt hours at home. That's about 250 kilowatt hours less than previous months. We went on vacation uh, and we just weren't driving as much with the holidays here too. Um, so that kind of explains that drop in usage. Now, adding that vehicle data into our monthly data and taking a look at the three year trend here, we're actually pretty similar across the board. Um, solar generally provides us the electricity for around 30% of our house usage. Power walls are around 50% and the grid fills in the rest. Next up, we'll take a look at solar production here. I hear the inverters whirring up behind me, so the rain must have stopped, the sun must be coming back out. But 
in October, we produced 1114.8 uh, kilowatt hours. In November, that was down to 702.1 kilowatt hours. October averaged around 35 kilowatt hours of solar production a month. November decreased about a third to about 23 kilowatt hours on average. We're almost to the end of that painful decrease in solar production as the days are pretty much as the shortest they're going to be and the you know tilt of the earth is as far away from the sun as possible in the northern hemisphere. Now, looking at November production data for the past three years, 2023 ends up as the lowest producing of the three. It's kind of interesting to see that the previous two years peaked at 36 and 30, uh, 38 kilowatt hours on the best day. Whereas this year, we didn't even get close to above 30 kilowatt hours uh, for the month. You can still see that pretty consistent downtrend happening throughout the month with production decreasing, though. Next up, we'll take a look at the Powerwall discharges for the month. For October, it was 542.1 kilowatt hours discharged in October. In November, that was down to 331.8 kilowatt hours discharged. Now, I make it a point as the solar production decreases here to try and do as much as I can, you know, electricity usage wise during the day, whether that's laundry, charging, etc. as I don't want to use the power walls overnight as much as possible. Um, I'll typically, you know, switch over to using the grid if I know I'm going to be charging a lot or doing a lot of laundry. So that mainly uh, kind of explains that decrease in the power wall usage. Now, we're also going to start doing that 40%, 60% split here, so that should change the numbers a little bit too. Now, our power wall discharges from November for the past three years are somewhat similar, averaging anywhere from about 11 to 15 kilowatt hours per night of power wall usage. We're still using a little bit more than one power wall's capacity a night, even on the lighter days, so I'm glad that we have the multiple power walls. Um, you know, as I explained in the earlier videos, I started using the 40% for the self-powered mode. So theoretically, December's number shouldn't be too much higher as it's a max of like 16 kilowatt hours per day, but we'll just have to take a look there. Now, PG&E is continuing to stay on a roll here. We still have not had an unplanned outage since April. Uh, it's pretty, pretty impressive here. Um, you know, haven't been able to use the power walls for the backup reserve, but we're keeping it there just in case. Hopefully that trend continues. Our neighbors actually across the street had an outage. I don't know why it didn't affect us over here, um, but thankfully we didn't have to deal with that. Last up, we'll take a look at those net grid use numbers. Now in October, we imported net 305.5 kilowatt hours. Uh, in November, that was down to 155.3 net imported kilowatt hours. Uh, November still is enough production that we are able to export at the beginning of the month. And if you looked at those three charging days and basically took those out, we'd be about even, um, you know, in terms of importing and exporting especially with the fact that we charged a bit less this month than the previous month. Um, I think that kind of explains that drastic decline from 300 to 150. Now, grid use for November for the past three years uh, is very close. November 2021 and November 2022 show us using self-powered at 100% only. This year, we're going to have that 40-60 split, so it might look a little bit different. But at the same time, you know, we exported... 100 kilowatt hours more, but we also imported about 100 kilowatt hours more. Uh, this basically just allowed us to have a more consistent backup level in case of outages. However, we really didn't need to use the power walls for that. It's pretty cool to see that the um, difference in the three years here is only about 15 kilowatt hours or so. Now, Let's take a look at those self-powered numbers. This month we were 62% self-powered, which is down 2% from last month, which was 64%. 26% from solar this month, it was 29% last month. Basically those days are still getting shorter. 36% um, from power walls, which was 35% last month. And grid use in October was 36%, up to 38% in November. Um, grid use here should probably peak in December, uh, November and December here as the solar and power walls will start climbing back to 100% self-powered as we get more sun. So hope you enjoy the November update here. Come back for December. Uh, hope you have a good one.